to the School of Calisthenics. I'm Jacko and uh, thank you for joining us for this follow-on workout. I've got an absolute treat for you today. By popular demand, people asking for some more mobility and yoga uh, follow-along workouts, we have got Coach Jude, who is one of our calisthenics coaches, but is also a yoga teacher. So uh, I will do none other than introduce you to Jude, who is going to take you through today's follow-along workout. But don't forget to subscribe wherever it is if you haven't yet um, and let us know what you think of the workout and any of the workouts you want to know down in the comments um, and we look forward to trying to provide everything that we can for you. So Jude, are you ready? It's Jude, we're going to do some yoga with you. What do you need? You need uh, a space somewhere in your house, in your garden, big enough for you to lie down, move anything sharp, any coffee tables or anything like that so um, when you wave your arms and legs around uh, you're not going to injure yourself. I've got yoga mats, you don't necessarily need one but if you've got one throw your yoga mat down. Um, I've got water, you might want to drink. Uh, I've also even got a pillow off my sofa, I'll explain why we want that um, a bit later on. What I haven't got is socks. Doesn't matter how good, how strong your sock game is, we don't need them today. Bare feet is better. We don't want to slip around. So I'd recommend um, bare feet, depending upon where you're practicing anyway. So I'm going to head over to the mat and we're going to start seated. So it's morning here where I am. Hopefully it's morning where you're practicing. But if it's not, then we're going to do a little energizing flow that will um, get you feeling a little livelier, a little more energized. Um, for whatever time of the day you're in. So assuming that like me, you've not long got, got out of bed, we're not gonna start lying down, we're gonna start on our seats. And we're just gonna pick up the glutes, move them out of the way so I can feel my sit bones sitting on that floor, on the mat beneath me, whatever you're working on. Maybe it's the grass, and we're gonna walk these fingers just away from those hips a little bit so we start to get a bit of a stretch into the stop, tops of the shoulders. So a nice long spine from this position, let's just bring the chin down towards the chest. So we're not going to squeeze, we don't need to force it, just the weight of the head will be enough to get a bit of a stretch into the back of that neck. And then let the right ear just drift over towards the right shoulder. So look forward so you start to get a stretch into the left side of the neck and into the top of the shoulder. You might want to just rest the palm of the right hand onto the crown of the head. We're not going to pull or force. Just that feeling, that sensation of the hand on the head is enough just to get a bit more depth into that stretch. And then let's take the chin up towards the sky. And we're going to let left ear just drift over to that left shoulder. Left hand onto that head again, gentle. Intention, just lengthening through that right side before we bring the chin back down to the chest and then extend the crown of the head all the way back up towards the sky. Right fingers, we're going to reach them high. Keep your right sit bone glued to the floor as we take a bend over to the left. So creating a nice C shape all down that right side. We're going to bring that right hand onto the left knee as we slide the left fingers behind your tailbone and just push into the floor, lengthen through that spine and then draw on that knee ever so gently we're going to just start to open the chest to the left side of the mat, maybe looking over that left shoulder as we get a bit of a twist through the spine. And then coming back to centre, take those fingers wide again, let's take the left fingers to the sky, reach nice and tall, take a bend over to the right side, that C shape, keeping that sit bone grounded, hand comes to the opposite knee, slide the right fingers behind your tail, sit tall, and then again, let's twist gently, just a little gentle pull on that knee. Maybe you can look over the right shoulder. If that hurts the neck though, just look straight ahead, it's not a problem. And then coming all the way back to centre. Plant the hands, we're going to step back onto our hands and knees. I'm going to turn into a sideways position so you can see me better. So coming into a tabletop position, knees underneath the hips, wrists underneath the shoulders and we're active through the arms, so we're not going to sink into those shoulder joints, we're not yet going to sink um, the belly to the floor. We're going to think about lengthening the tailbone away from the crown, drawing that belly in towards the spine. Spread the fingers nice and wide and push the mat away with the hand so that we're active 
through those arms, through the shoulders. Let's just have a little wiggle through cat and cow here just to wake the spine up. So you can use the breath on the in-breath, just dropping the belly to the floor, lift up the tail, lift up the chest. You can even roll the eyes to the sky. And on the out breath, tucking that tailbone under, tucking the chin to the chest and arching that back all the way up to the top of the room. So just move as you see fit here, whatever your body is telling you feels good. So if you want to start having a little wiggle of that tail from side to side, either in cat or in cow pose, this is our cat. Then if it feels good, then just give it a go. General rule at yoga is we're working to the edge of what's comfortable. We're never trying to force the body into a place of pain or discomfort. Just playing around with the edge. And I'm just going to start to have a little rock from side to side. So checking out how the wrists feel today. Perhaps making that sideways movement a bit more circular. Fingers turn into the outer edge of the mat. So just change that position of the hands, even turning them all the way around to face the knees. So you might guess that we need the cushion because we're going to have a little go at crow pose later so it's always good just to warm up these wrists a little bit and then turning those fingers back to face the front of your mat we're going to come all the way back onto the knees so flatten your feet I'm going to turn uh, to face the front of you again so sitting on the knees or kneeling on the knees I guess is a better word we're going to take the right leg out towards the side. Now it's directly out from the hip, it's not forwards or backwards. It's pointing out at the clock faces, um, time clock, then you're exactly out at three or six, depending upon whether you're doing your right leg or your left leg. Three or nine, I should say even. Um, and we're going to try and push the outer edge of that right foot into the mat. So rest your right hand just on the outside of that right thigh. We're going to reach the left fingers really tall again. And then let's take a bend over to that right side. So that C shape again through the left side, stretching into the outer the edge of that hip. Let's come all the way back to center, keep the lower body as it is, but we're gonna plant the hands again so that they're directly underneath the shoulders. Now, let's sweep the right fingers all the way up to the top of the room, and we're gonna thread that right hand through the space underneath your left ribs and see if we can get the shoulder and the ear down towards the mat. Now it doesn't matter if you can't get all the way there but if you can just let that ear that shoulder rest on the floor really nice stretch for the inner ed edge of that leg as well the inner thigh and then coming all the way back to center pushing yourself back onto the knee and swapping sides so left leg out to the side, push into the outer edge of that left foot, left fingers just resting on the thigh, we're going to reach tall with those right fingers and then take a bend over. Oh, how's that feeling? Don't forget to breathe. Keeping the lower body where it is, let's come back to centre, planting the hands this time, left fingers all the way up to that sky, let's thread the hands through the space underneath the right ribs, shoulder, ear, down towards the mat if you can. A little bit of rotation through the spine. And then coming all the way back to centre. Keep the hands on the mat, we're going to send the knees back underneath the hips. And then tuck the toes and lift those hips into what we call downward facing dog. Now, it should look like an inverted V pose. You might just get the urge to have a little paddle out of the heels here. Feels nice for the backs of the legs. Don't worry if your heels don't reach the floor. For some of us, it's never, ever going to be possible. Just anatomically, we're not built that way. If your heels reach the floor, then that's no problem. If you find your heels reach the floor, but at the expense of coming into this U shape, then it's much nicer to have a soft bend in the knees, to push the mat over the hands and send that tailbone all the way up to the sky. Heads nice and relaxed in between the biceps, so give it a little sh shake, yes and no. We're going to have a twist here, so take your right hand, let's see if we can reach 
for somewhere on the outside of that left leg. So maybe work for the ankle and then draw on the ankle and see if you can look underneath your left armpit. Good. Let's come back to down dog and try the other side. So left hand on the outside of that right leg. Pull on that ankle, look under the right arm. And then coming back to centre, we're going to take the right toes all the way up to the top of the room. Look at the space between the hands, come high on the left toes. See if you can step that right foot all the way through. Now, if you find your right foot comes halfway up the mat, you can pick up that right ankle and drag it forwards. We're going to drop our left knee down onto the floor and bring our right hand onto the inside of that right foot and heel toe the right foot to the edge of the mat. So we should look something like this. So hands both underneath the shoulders, right foot on the outside of the mat. And we're kind of just working it into these hips now in our lizard pose. So adjust where you want to be. The right ankle is underneath that right knee. If you feel you can shuffle that left foot back a little bit to get into this left hip a little bit more, then do. If you are more comfortable with the knee a little closer to the wrist, then hold it there. We're going to move a little bit here. So you've got an option whether you keep the left knee on the floor or whether you tuck the left toes and pick up that left knee. Makes it a little stronger, pushing the heel towards the back of the room. Take a big breath in, let's take the right fingers all the way up to the sky, look up towards that right thumb. Exhale, let's come back down. Inhale, we lift. Exhale, we're coming back down. One last time, big breath in. Let's hold here for three breaths. Option to drop that left knee and reach for those left toes if you want to to take the bind. Now, that might not be available to you, and if it isn't, don't force it. And if you find that your shoulder starts to drop, then just let it go, we're not ready for it. We wanna keep the body nice and open to the right side of the mat, looking over that right shoulder still. So have a play around with it, see what works, or as an alternative, we just stay in this lunge position. We're gonna bring the hands down, to the mat as we heel toe that right foot back into centre. Fingertips either side of that right toe, let's just lengthen out the right leg. So you might want to move your hands to make this possible, getting a bit of a stretch into that right hamstring, and keep the spine long. If you start to flex through the T-spine, all of that stretch is going to go out the back of that leg, so keep the chest lifted, keep extending the crown of the head forwards. And then let's bring the weight back onto that right foot. We're going to plant the hands either side, tuck the left toes, lift the left knee, step back into your down dog. Keep these inverted V poses nice and strong. Push the mat away with the hands, lift that tailbone. And then let's take the left toes to the sky. Look at the space between the hands. We're going to step that left foot all the way through. Bring that right knee down onto the floor. Bring the left hand onto the inside of the left foot and heel toe that left foot all the way over to the edge of your mat. So again, have a little move around, shuffle those right toes back if you can, and if that feels good. Making sure that left ankle is underneath that left knee. We're going to tuck the right toes, lift up that right knee if you want to, and then sweep those left fingers up to the sky. Bringing that left hand back down to the mat. Big breath in. And down. Last big breath. You can hold here, you can hold here. You can tuck those right toes, perhaps grab hold of that right foot, keeping the chest nice and open to the left side. Give that quite a bit of a stretch as well. And then let's all meet, hands back onto the mat, heel toe that left foot back into centre, and we're going to lengthen out that left leg. So you might not completely straighten the left leg, it doesn't matter, as long as you can feel something down the back of that hamstring. Remember, spine is long, belly towards thigh. Let's move the weight back onto that left foot, frame it, tuck the right toes, lift the right knee, 
we're stepping all the way back into our downward facing dog. Let's take right toes to the sky. Look at the space between the hands, we're going to step that right foot through. Now we're staying on the left big toe this time, so left knee stays lifted. Engage the core. I'm going to bring the arms all the way up into the sky in our high lunge. Again, I'm going to turn to face you. So, check out this right knee. If it's drifting in towards the big toe, we want to square up these hips a little bit. Make sure that knee is tracking forwards over the centre of that right foot. Shoulders are nice and relaxed. If they've come up to the ears, just draw them down the back. Maybe look up at that space between the hands. We're going to have a little pulse here. So as we breathe out, bring the elbows down to the shoulders, cactus hands, left knee down to the floor. Inhale, coming back into high lunge. Exhale. Inhale, back into that high lunge. One last time. Inhale, we're back into that high lunge. We're gonna drop the left heel, take the arms wide into warrior two. So I'm back into this side view. Left foot is now parallel with the short edge of the mat. We've still got that nice deep bend in the knee, but the arms are wide and the hips are now facing the left side of your mat. This is our warrior two pose, the core's working. So if your belly's pop forwards, if your ribs have lifted, lengthen the tailbone, get this core working for you. We're gonna lengthen out that right leg, turn the toes to face the long edge of your mat, bring the hands onto the hips. So, side view. Both um, toes are slightly turned in, so your heels a little wider apart than your toes. We're going to come into a wide legged forward fold with an option of a headstand if you want it. It's just an option. For our fold, the body's going to take the path of least resistance, so it likes to push the bum back because it keeps you safe. It keeps the weight in the heels. It feels much safer. We're going to try and keep our hips stacked on top of the ankles. If you rest your fingertips on your hip creases, it just reminds us where we want to take the fold. So long spine, leading with the chest, pull the way into the front part of the feet, the balls of the feet, as we start to come into this folded position. Now, once your body is parallel with the mat, you might want to just bring your fingertips down onto the floor. If your fingertips don't come all the way to the floor, then use a block or a book or even your cushion just to provide you with a little bit of support. If your hands are easy on the floor, then you can just start to enjoy the fold. So keep the body with that long spine folding forwards. Work the hands through the legs. Legs are long. Don't lock out the knees here, but we're working towards long legs. And that tailbone, just like in our down dog, is heading up towards the sky. Now, you can stay here and you can enjoy this forward fold. Or you can have a bit of a play around with attempting to come into a headstand if you want to. It's a good position to come into a headstand. Now, if you fancy it, we're going to make a tripod with the hands and the head. Now, if your hands and your head are on the same line, that's going to make it tricky. So, have your hands somewhere midway between your feet and where you think it's possible to rest at the top of the head. And then just experiment with easing the weight into the tiptoes and maybe we can start to lift the toes an inch or two. And if you feel you can lift the toes an inch or two, perhaps we can lift those legs all the way up into the sky. Have a play around. Using that core, drawing that belly in towards the spine to start to peel the toes. Or just enjoying that long, wide-legged forward fold. When you're ready, we're going to walk the hands back underneath the nose. Hands onto the hips, lift into that halfway and then come all the way back up to centre. 
I'm turning to face you again. I'm going to turn my left toes to face the front of the mat. Spread the arms nice and wide. Pop the bend in the knee. Coming into warrior two on the left side. And then sweeping the arms forwards, pivoting on that right big toe to find our high lunge on the left. Let's pulse here in that cactus shape. So exhale, elbows to shoulders, drop the knee. Inhale, we lengthen. Exhale. Inhale, we lengthen. Exhale. Inhale, we lengthen. Arms wide, drop that heel, hands to hips, legs long with heel toe, those feet to mat distance apart. And we're going to sit into a nice low squat. So press your hands together over heart centre, let's send that tailbone down and work the elbows into the inner edge of those knees. So have a move around here, just check out how the hips are feeling. You might want to just plant the right hand and sweep the left fingers up to the sky. And then change sides. And you guessed it. It's a great position to have a go at coming into our crow pose or frog for those of you that are more familiar with that terminology. So, pillow, handy if you want it. A couple of tips when coming into um, frog pose or crow pose, um, do what you can with the knees to work them as high into the triceps as you can. Now for some people, elbows on the outside of the triceps is, is as good as we can get and that's absolutely fine. You can still start to make a shelf for the elbows, push them backwards and begin to take the weight onto those arms. However, if you work those knees high into the triceps, almost into the armpits, we've got a better chance of getting the hips higher and of beginning to lengthen out the arms a little bit. Second tip, try and look forwards. Where you look, where you send the gaze, is where the head's going to go. So if you're looking down, that's where the head's going to go, more chance of falling over. If we start to look forwards as we make a bend in these elbows, then we feel a little more stable, we might be able to start to pick up one toe and then the next. Have a play, see what works. From our crow pose, we're going to see if it's possible. Engage that core, jump the feet back into a plank position. So, we're going to stay in plank here. And there are a few options. If the arms are starting to tire and you want to drop the knees onto the floor, then you can. If you feel as if you can come into this full plank, then squeeze the glutes to keep the body in a nice long line. Or, final option, three pushes into a low plank, rolling forward on those toes, hover down, inhale, roll back, two more. Last one. Drop the knees, seat to the heels and just stretch out that spine in a child's pose. Whew, so have a little breather. How's the body feeling? Three more breaths. And then let's swing these legs around to meet on our seats. How are you feeling guys? Hope that's warmed you up a little bit. So we're gonna um, bend up the left knee and press the sole of the left foot into the right leg. Somewhere on that right thigh. Now your shoulders are going to be facing the space in between the knees, that's fine to begin with. We're going to bring the fingertips onto the mat just in front of that left ankle, sit nice and tall, and then see if we can start to just inch forwards with that long spine again. 
So you might not go very far here. You're going to feel something in the back of the right leg, maybe in the left knee, in the lower back. So just find that first point. Take a breath or two. And then walk those fingers back up towards the shin. We're going to turn the body to face this long right leg. So shoulders have gone from in between the knees to facing that long right leg. I'm going to sweep the arms high to remind the spine to be long and then fold up the hip crease, see if I can cover that leg with the body. Hand to land somewhere. For some of us the foot is in easy reach, for others not so much, you can rest the hands on the mat either side of that long leg, doesn't matter. Try and keep that spine long each time you breathe out. Chest, belly, getting a little bit closer to that thigh. Let's come back up to centre. We're going to take this left leg over the right. Left hand is coming right behind the tail. Right arm is going to reach high. Then we're going to hook that elbow onto the outside of the knee and just push gently against it as we find another twist. Turning to look over that left shoulder. And then relax, come back to centre. Let's swap sides. So left leg long, bend up the right knee, let it drift out, sole of that foot somewhere on the inside of that left leg, fingertips in front of the ankle, sit tall, we're going to walk forwards, find that first point, you might not be more than a couple of degrees off vertical, doesn't matter, no competition. And then walking back up to centre, physically shift yourself to turn to look at that left leg, let's sweep the arms high. And then fold over that long left leg. Reaching the foot if you can, resting the hands either side of that long leg if that's your edge. And coming back to centre, taking this right leg over the left. Sit tall. The right hand slides behind the tail, left arm reaches high, we're going to hook that elbow onto the outside of the knee, push gently into it, start to open the body to the right side, maybe looking over that right shoulder. And then coming back to centre, bring the soles of the feet together, one last fold here. If you can, interlace the fingers around the outer edge of the feet and let's just walk the hips and the heels a little bit closer together. This time, allow the spine to flex as we use the biceps to draw the nose a little bit closer to the inner edge of the feet. Last breath. Let's come all the way back to centre. We're going to cross those ankles, sit tall, we're back where we started. Rest the hands in the lap or just rest the wrists on the knees. Take a big breath in and let it out with a big sigh. One more, this time arms wide. And bring those hands down through your heart centre. Well done guys, I hope you enjoyed that little practice this morning, I hope you feel energised and um, happy to bring you more. If you need it, just let us know in the comments. See you soon!